Thanks for joining us here at the Vermont Rail Action Network reception. My name is Brad Worthen. I'm the vice chair of the organization, and it's a pleasure to see you. I see another number of our lawmakers here and supporters of our organization. The uh, Vermont Rail Action Network is comprised of 2,500 members statewide, and we're an advocacy group for both freight and passenger rail services throughout the state, and we've been around for a couple decades. Uh, we um, had the uh, great fortune of running into our hiring our new executive director over here, uh, Christine Picaro. Chris, Christine, stand up, say hello. We're uh, very fortunate to have her talent on board, and you'll see be seeing more of Christine as we go through our our, our program. And uh, we're also uh, doing our planning for our annual dinner coming up in November, and uh, we uh, look forward to having that. And this year, we're going to have it right here. Right? I think that's the plan. Somewhere, we haven't picked the date yet, but we'll have it in my failure. So if any of you know who I am, uh, I, I know a little, bit, a little bit about railroads. But I learned a new fact the other day that I was pretty excited about, and it's right over here. 85% 85, 85 of all of us, all Vermonters, live within one mile of a rail, which is outstanding. And that's why we don't need another study in the legislature to tell us what we need to do. We don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars for some consultant out of state to tell us that we need to spend $165, $165 million on rail equipment when the gentleman I'm going to introduce to you next spent about 4% of that number and has a rolling stock of absolutely beautiful, restored, fully functional bun cars ready to go and start serving those 85%. You know, part of our uh, culture here in Vermont, as it was throughout the nation, has been uh, we don't need railroads. We need more roads. And we're behind the curve on a, on a global level, but we're slowly coming back. If you look across the country, you will see a number of municipalities that have now realized that rail infrastructure transportation uh, is an important part of our economy and our, our, our growing populations to accommodate movement of those populations. David Blitterstorf is not only well known in the energy field, but several years ago he decided that he was going to take things into his own hands and grab these butt cars while he could, bring them to Vermont, and use them on our railroads. The challenge that we have is getting the cooperation of all the railroads. I'll remind everyone in the room that over the past decade, we have spent over $100 million on improving our infrastructure, rail infrastructure here in the state. Now that's been a private, the railroads contributing, the state and the feds contributing to make that happen. We are this close to completing what needs to be done on the infrastructure between Burlington and Rutland so that we can get Amtrak to Union Station in Burlington and perhaps six and a half hours later, Penn Station, arriving Penn Station in New York. It can happen. We've done an enormous amount of improvement out here on our central Vermont line. And if any of you have taken Amtrak, the uh, Vermonter, lately to, uh, to point south, I did the, had the chance of doing it the other day, and I was surprised that because of the improvements in the crossings and signaling, we were doing 79 miles an hour. That ain't bad. That's pretty exciting. Anyway, uh, we want to make sure that uh, everybody in the room gets a chance to understand what David's doing, what we're doing as an organization. If you haven't had a chance to join, we're online. You're welcome to join us, uh, to become, a, become one of the 2,500 members, and uh, be a part of our organization. So without further ado, the gentleman who has opened his wallet so that we can all enjoy public transportation, would you please welcome David Blitterstorp. David? Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. And, you know, I, I got into this really not knowing what I was doing. Uh, I'm not a railroader. Uh, I, I grew up with uh, model trains, and that's the closest I ever really got to trains. Um, and went into this trying to do something uh, different in Vermont. Uh, it was frustrating to see as we look at 
climate change, the CO2 crisis, uh, energy, oil, all these things that are happening that we weren't making any progress in the state. And the data shows that transportation is a huge, huge uh, emitter of carbon dioxide. It's where we put, uh, use most of our oil that's imported. And I wanted to do something about it after uh, decades of working in the wind and solar fields. Um, ever since I was a 12 year old, I knew something was wrong with this uh, finite fossil fuel era we're living in. And now we're the recipients of what's wrong. Uh, we know what we have to do, and we're gonna have to do it. So I did go out and buy these cars, um, and because it's technology that I think works, it's the Vermont way, you know, it's on the cheap. Uh, it's not gold plated, uh, but they're beautiful cars. And if I'm not successful, I'll be living in a cardboard box under one of these bridges. <laughs> I, I, when I built my first wind farm up in Milton, uh, it was like six years ago, I had the same moment that I thought that maybe I was going to be in a cardboard box under a bridge because <laughs> things were so tight time-wise and it, it was a, a calculated risk to get that built in time uh, before tax credits ended and things changed. But, it's the same sort of thing uh, that, you know, everybody in this room, I'm glad you're here. Uh, you are the leaders to make this work. And by having the hardware here, I'm just a hardware company. I'm not gonna be operating these. We need the state, we need others, we need legislators helping us push to do what we wanna do. But the very first thing that we are probably going to do is get the line between Montpelier and Barrie up and running. It's not gonna cost 10, 15, 20 million dollars to do it. We're gonna do it by just replacing the ties, uh, ballast, straightening the rails, and getting that up to a 30 mile per hour line. It's a 10 mile per hour line right now. 30 miles an hour, our bud cars will go back and forth between Barrie and Montpelier faster than you can drive that same route. And you won't have to park and you won't have all those other problems. So that's our first goal. We got to get something running to show that this will work. And so that's why I'm in this right now. Um, at some point, I can't wait forever for the state and others to come on board. So we're pushing. If I have to wait more than maybe another year, I'm probably gonna lease these cars to other places. But. I am not gonna sell these because these are unique hardware in the world that you cannot find anywhere. We have the best hardware anybody else in the, for, for this type of service, these self-powered bud cars. So uh, I'm gonna keep them and I want them to run in Vermont. I'm a Vermonter, I want this to work and I think we can make it work. You know, Vermont has led on so many things. This is another one that we're leading on. You know, almost every week, uh, I get an email or Charlie gets a call, I get a call. I said, hey, what are you doing in Vermont? We understand your vision. We wanna do it in Calgary. We wanna do it in Boston. The MBTA that used to be the owner of these cars when they originally ran in the 50s, they want them back. <laughs> so, something interesting is happening. We are stimulating uh, a, a new vision and I call it back to the future because it's what we used to do and now we're gonna go back to it. And I don't believe the automobile is gonna save us. I don't care if it's electric, I don't care if it's self-driving. We must have transit like rail integrated with bus, integrated with short haul vans, walking. We have to go back to that. And one last thing, as I sort of rant and rave here, is uh, I believe one of the things that Vermont needs to do is revitalize its communities. And the rail station was central to a community in the past. We need to keep elementary schools in the community. We need to have the rail station in the community. That's how we're going to live again in the future, not scattered all across the, the mountains and the hitherlands, because that doesn't work on an energy perspective, on a carbon perspective, and it's not the best way to live. So that's where we're going. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, 
Our next uh, presenter is no stranger to railroading here in the state of Vermont, uh, Charlie Moore, who is the uh, general manager for, for, for David's company, All Earth Rail. Charlie is a uh, resident of St. Albans and uh, had his illustrious career through uh, many levels of railroading to end up as the executive or general manager of the New England Central Railroad, uh, vice president status, and also at the same time running seven short lines. So we couldn't find a better person to head up this project with, uh, with David. Charlie, come on down. Wow, this is great. We sure appreciate everybody's support. And I, we have to thank uh, uh, Joe Flynn and the Agency of Transportation for their support. Uh, the Senate and Transportation Committees for learning about us, willing to believe in us, and to get us on the transportation bill for a, um, a technical analysis is very much appreciated. This is a great opportunity for the state of Vermont, and I hope that if there's one thing we accomplish when everybody leaves this room, that they can see value in, in what we want to um, what we want to do, I think David really covered everything. But I've been in the railroad business for way too long, probably some people would say, and I was so honored when David Blitterstorff asked me to join him as president of All Earth Rail to uh, manage this uh, commuter rail service. And as David says. You know, we're going to do it the Vermont way. That doesn't mean we're going to do it on the cheap, but we're going to make it very good and desirable to all of, um, all of Vermonters. Uh, I'm also on the board of the Vermont Rail Action Network, uh, and I sat on the Governor's Rail Council, and I happen to be president of our great museum in, in St. Albans. We have a total of 12 mud cars, two in St. Albans and 10 in Barrie that are, as David said, are pristine, they're beautiful. Uh, and you can see some of the pictures uh, on the slides here. Um, they can run 85 miles an hour, but we'll operate at 59 here in the state of Vermont. Uh, it only requires one individual, an engineer, to operate them versus a train where it would require two to three. Uh, we want to take you for a ride. We want you to enjoy. So visit us in Barrie so we can show you the cars and, uh, and uh, let, us, let us show off. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charlie. It's great to have you uh, working on this project. The uh, chairperson of the Vermont Rail Action Network is Lee Kahn. She's no stranger to our group at all. Lee is uh, the, uh, I like to call her the Energizer Bunny when it comes to pushing our organization, getting things accomplished, researching, digging in, and finding facts that are just unbelievable, such as the 85% within one mile of rail. But Lee's done an enormous amount of uh, research when it comes to uh, the capacity of our railroads and our particularly freight and how we can enhance our whole freight uh, uh, usage here within the state of Vermont. So without further ado, Lee Kahn. Lee? Thank you. I think I can take that. All right. Uh, first of all, David Blittersdorf, you're crazy, and we love you. Thank you. You know, I, what can we say? You know, you know what's happening in, in many communities right now is that uh, impact investors are surfacing to make a substantial difference in life. And the environment and the economy align when it comes to rail. And David stepped out there and uh, we worked closely during the bid process and won the uh, cars from DART, perfectly beautifully maintained cars from uh, the Dallas area, Rapid Transit, and I will never forget the day where all of a sudden they, he said, we won, and we're like, what do we do now? <laughs> 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 you know? 
to say that we're still making this up as we go along is true, okay? We're just be honest with you. And, uh, and what a blessing you are. So uh, that, thank you. I also want to know, did anybody in here buy a ticket to the VRAN dinner and then we canceled it? Raise your hand if you did. God bless you guys. I love you. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you why we canceled it. Uh, we've been flirting with uh, Secretary Chow, Elaine Chow, to come up and be our dinner speaker. And uh, we just couldn't get a date pulled together with her. But tomorrow, Senator Leahy is meeting with her personally to ask her to come up. So fingers crossed. Uh, we hope that she will be our dinner speaker and that we'll have something on the books relatively soon. Uh, I want to pick up on something that uh, Brad said earlier and walk you through. Could take a look at this map a little bit later on. Uh, you know, Vermont has spent $100 million in the last decade on its rail infrastructure. And again, this is one of those places where both the environment and the economy align. And one of the projects that, that we feel very committed to is that it's time to connect people and freight to that investment. And we have not capitalized on that investment, and it's time to do it. So we can move people with the bug cars, but we also do a lot of work on freight. And this is a project that the Vermont Rail Action Network undertook a couple of years ago. And we're constantly updating and working on it. These are rail adjacent properties, and these rail adjacent properties uh, went through a filter system. And then we pulled together an entire database working with the railroads, working with CLF, saying, what would you like for us to eliminate from the filter? And CLF said, this is a great idea. Why don't you eliminate uh, Prime Ag and wetlands? So the first filter process was Prime Ag and wetlands. The second filter process was uh, topography related to what the railroads requested. And the third one was parcel size. So this is a listing of marketable properties that are adjacent to railroads that we can attract businesses to the state of Vermont to use the, the very soft footprint of rail for free. So it's time to connect those things. And this is a project I'd be glad to share with anybody come over and ask me afterwards. And I'll walk you through what we're doing and why we think this is such a great idea. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. So we do have a, a few minutes for questions. If anybody would like to ask any one of our speakers any questions, we will bring them back up. And uh, yes, ma'am. I am uh, a new owner of the Old Village School in Wells River. And if anyone is familiar with Wells River, there is an active railroad freight going through that, uh, adjacent to it daily. And since no one in the area wants to do anything with the, with the old village school, which is a magnificent building. Um, I feel so dedicated to rail that I would be willing to donate the school. And it is a uh, crossroad, has always been a crossroad to New Hampshire. And judging by the number of cars that go through there on a daily basis, there, there could be demand. Sure. We'll take it. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll take, take it. it. Done. <laughs> but, okay, we'll do the paperwork before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank what? you. Brad, Brad, would you repeat what the, just a recap? Sure. Uh, this lady has uh, ownership to the Wells River <laughs> Library. Oh, it's great. It's great. great. Is adjacent to the tracks on the old Boston Main yeah. line, and which is now Vermont Rail System. And she has graciously said this could be an important part of our community and rail transportation. And she is going to donate. Wow. She's her willing. Property, willing to donate her to property. Lee's ready to sign her up. I went any time. I'm a, I'm, I'm a licensed realtor. We can make that happen. <laughs> Attorney in the room. <laughs> that, but that's very nice of you, and you know we, you. we have been working on that as an organization to not only uh, enhance our infrastructure along rail, but our stations as well. And uh, we know that there's a number of our Amtrak stops 
that need a lot of work. This is wonderful. This Thank would you for make it. a lovely depot. You could even have a hotel in there. You could have we love it. A cafe. We love it. It's Very a great fun. idea. Thank you. Cautious to handle. Thank you. Conscious to hand the microphone to Carl. All right, here he says it's free. 25 words of plastic. I'm going to reinforce the lady's comment. The last passenger train to serve Wells River was the Alouette. And the Alouette was a bug car train. Went from White River Junction up to Montreal via Newport and St. Johnsbury. And even the paralleling bus services up there have now collapsed. So that idea may be much more interesting than we might think, given what we have the 12 bucks sitting up here. Thank you, Carl. More questions, please. I have a question. Um, yes, sir. Any new updates on the um, progress along the uh, Middlebury Burlington line? Okay, you may want to talk to that. Any, anybody? Nobody here from Vermont Rail. Yes, sir. Two years. Two more years. Um, it would have been sooner, except for the tunnels in Middlebury. What? I have to say that again. Kirk McCormick, Burlington. Um, two more years. And the reason it's taking two years instead of, instead of actually starting this summer are the two tunnels in um, in Builder. Yeah. He is an authority, the chairman of the House Transportation Committee. Thank you. Any other questions? Here. Right here. Al, can you hear me? You can project, and I'm going to hold the microphone for you. What's V Train and what's this organization? connected with getting our Essex Junction Station, which Carl told me is due for some renovations, because it is the highest volume station for this train. And your relationship with that station? I've been attending there. Very good. Can you repeat the question? Yes, the, que the question is, is when are we going to expect to get an improved facility at the Essex Junction, the, at the Essex Junction Amtrak Station? Now is the station master for anything better okay. definition that's a good question if we had perhaps someone here from v trans they might be able to help us out but i will tell you that well, I, I can tell you okay <laughs> who are you i'll make no okay. pie right. yeah great morgan from essex um yeah. so there's a proposal um that essex has developed with the chicken county regional planning commission to redo that station. I like to call it a, it looks like a bunker from the 1950s from Brooklyn, got to Brooklyn, but uh, that, anyway, um, there's a proposal to do it. It's a $1.2 million project, and at this point, the village doesn't have, and the town don't have the money, and the question is, where will that come from? So the work has been done to develop the idea and the concept. Time and money, we can do anything. We have 23 seats at the station, and when we have 200 college kids going home, it's mayhem there. Isn't that the most popular station in the state? It is. It's the most well, highest volume station. Highest volume station. We, we're number one in uh, yeah. seconds, either Rutland or Brattleboro. 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 Yeah. You got more seats yeah. than Brattleboro does. Yeah. <laughs> I think you got more seats than Brattleboro does. <laughs> we, we have. Oh, it's yeah. awful. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so there's a lot of work to be done, but, but that's what this group is about. That's what VRAN's yeah. about. That's what this meeting's about. It's to share ideas, what what's lies ahead with great visions such as David has, and how we can advocate as, a, as an organization to make things happen. Just a quick piece of history, and I'll get right to you, sir. You know, uh, let's see, a dozen years ago when they were going to pull the Ethan Allen, from service, it's this organization that rallied the constituents and the rail advocates in the state that prevented the, the administration, uh, I like Jim Douglas, but that's one thing he wanted to do, was to chair that and stop that route. And it's this organization that prevented that from happening. That's the power we have as an organization statewide. That's where we're having these sessions here and while we're, we'll have a great annual dinner as well. Yes, sir. I'm Steve Gross from Middlebury, and I want to thank the organization. Had it not been for your efforts, I wouldn't have been able to actually uh, commute as I did for 18 and a half years from our home in Middlebury to my work in Philadelphia. So that hats off to you. I don't know why it's turned out that in Middlebury, it seems we will not have a station, but we'll have a platform. Uh, the station that I used all those years, uh, for most part, was in Castleton. 
which is one of the most beautiful small stations yeah. probably in the world, I would defend it. And the folks who run it, uh, Marianne and Val are just terrific. They're dear friends. I don't see, and I don't know how it happened that we would not be getting a station in, in Middlebury. I deeply regret it because anybody who's been dropped off in the middle of winter and your ride's right not there. Yeah, uh, it ain't over. You, you, you get So you any information bearing that, I would appreciate knowing. So please yeah. let me know. We would love to be very supportive of any initiative to get a station there. I think Deb's got a little bit of work on that, haven't you? Yeah. Deb's also on our board. Um, you want to say? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, it's very exciting to hear and feel all of this energy in the room uh, for rail advocacy. And uh, one of the projects that uh, VRAN has is a station host program, which is really welcoming uh, people to Vermont, welcoming people to communities, and raising our, you know, raising the bridge here, raising our, our, uh, our train. Um, uh, places for our stations for um, community and for upcoming service and, and also existing service. So I, I think it's really exciting and if you want to get involved in something like that at the community level, there's a lot of stations that could use some help and we'd like to hear about that. We'd be delighted to help you that. get a station there. Yes, sir. We'd be delighted. Yourself. Uh, I'm Bill McDonald from Woodstock. Uh, three quick questions. We're going back to Montreal. If we attempted to negotiate with Amtrak to use dual, um, dual power to avoid the half an hour that Louis changed the engine in New Haven, and um, if we consider using these mud cars to uh, connect with Amtrak to uh, service it south of Springfield or Oval, we'd like to tackle that, Lee. Sure. The answer, Lee. Okay. okay. Yes, the mud cars would be the perfect connection to the new surface coming into Massachusetts, and they could operate under the Amtrak contract on the host railroad agreement. So yes, that's the consideration, and I think it's a really wise idea and a great use for the bike cars. Wouldn't it be a lot less expensive to use those north of Rutland? We'll yes, it would. Two locomotives on the train. Yes, it Rutland. would. You know, these cars are individually motorized, right? As most of you know that. And so they don't need locomotives. They don't need the, the staff that the Amtrak trains have. They can operate substantially cheaper uh, than Amtrak and operate by Amtrak with the same safety standard under the host of contract uh, agreement contract. And it's a great idea. And that's one of the things that we're pursuing. Can they be used like the, uh, the, the Bud SPD 2000 was supposed to be used? You went way over my head on that one. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, about 25 years ago, the Bud Company came out with a successor to the RDC. They called it the SPD 2000. It was supposed to be used, I guess, initially from Springfield, New Haven, and it would couple up to the back of a train that came in from Boston, so people would have a one-seat ride from the points on the Springfield line north of New Haven uh, without having to go to the expense of running a separate train from New Haven to New York. It's not a great idea, but somehow the SPV never cut the mustard. Maybe Carl knows why. Carl probably does. <laughs> Carl knows everything. You know, yeah. Seldom powered vehicles 2000. Yeah. They were fast engineered at Russia and they were. All right, so uh, let's go back to Montreal. The, uh, the pre-clearance issues evidently have been resolved. Uh, Brian Searles is the former Secretary of Transportation that is the governor's liaison to Canada. He'll be here tomorrow and he's meeting with them next week. Uh, and he uh, he's really optimistic that we have worked out almost all of the main, uh, major issues related to going back to Montreal. Um, within, within a year. Uh, you know, it's about 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. Put this aside. There's a question. Um, Allie, you're only allowed one question. Yeah, Going back to Montreal, you know. the old CVCN agreement with the crew was Sorry. equalization of mileage, equalization of mileage between St. Albans and Canton. So I don't know if the CN crew is going to. Uh, wave it off and let our crews go through Montreal. I don't know how that will work. Right. So right. the That's treaty, what... we signed a treaty um, if you were with Canada in order to be able to do clearance issues in Montreal and not on yeah. the south of the border. But I don't know about how the, the crews The crew, work. right. And also, we heard that 
one of the crew members has to be able to speak French. Because being in Quebec, I don't know if that's true or what. But that's we can make that happen. The skull, the skull, yeah. Right. That's the biggest problem we got. We got it solved. Anybody else? One more question. Yes, sir. Hold on. Identify yourself, please. My name is Joel Cope. I'm the administrator in the town of Brighton and Island Park, which is the home of the first international railroad, the St. Lawrence and Atlantic. We're the midpoint on that point, and we have a beautiful restored train station, and anybody is welcome to come up and take a look at it. Um, I just, if you're talking about stations, just wanted to say, come see ours. Thank you. Very nice. Anybody else? I was just wondering, uh, Greg Eppelwood, uh, Burlington. Uh, I was just wondering whether, uh, well, what is the uh, subsidization by the state of Vermont to our two uh, trains, uh, track trains, and is it ever, it is, is it in jeopardy uh, to an extent? I'm going to put that back to the House Chair. That was really good, Brad. Thank you. What's the, can you repeat the question? Yes, the question is, is uh, what is the current status of funding for Amtrak? Who's paying for it, I believe, and is it in jeopardy, the services we have here in Vermont and probably elsewhere in the country? And what's the state funding? I think yeah. that's the question. State funding, uh, $8 million for both trains. Uh, I don't believe that's in jeopardy. Uh, I heard that any, nobody is complaining about that uh, that I know of, at least in the state house. Uh, and as far as Amtrak, are there others that could be more current than what Amtrak uh, is saying? I guess I take this opportunity to mention that we first created the Ethan Allen Express because there's a lot of reasons, a lot of stars lined up, and one of those stars was that Amtrak was announcing a 21% nationwide cut in, in trains, and we were definitely on our train, our one train in North Carolina at the time was on the block. And so we kind of made lemonade out of lemons, which was we saved the uh, Montreal by making it in Vermonter, not going to Montreal, and then we created the family express at the same time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And also, while I have a moment, I want to just, I, I know I haven't recognized all the legislators in the room, the lawmakers, but thank you very much for being here and I uh, appreciate your support of uh, rail and rail activities throughout the state. Um, in your new position, I know that you've been a great advocate for all, all, all things rail, as, as well as your other duties as a chairman of House Trans. But I, we recognize as a V-RAN organization your efforts, and thank you very much for, you. for promoting rail. Very nice to see you. Okay, one more question. This, I'm sorry, this ladies, and then I'll take that one, and then we're going to step up to the bar. <laughs> I'm Carolyn, how do I show this? Okay, Carolyn Bates, Burlington, Vermont. Um, I used to ride in my grandpa's private car from St. Louis to Texas. Nice. But anyway, it was, um, it was over Pacific Railroad. It was a bankruptcy, the whole time you worked there. But I wanted to know how we, as individual people, can rally and go out and put some hands, some boots to the floor, or the ground and build some of these places or clean them up and get some people, local people, to organize and keep supporting some of the things you're doing as opposed to just um, a lot of talk with a lot of people, but it doesn't sound there's some, uh, um, let's see. Well, no, I, I get the question and it, it's a good one. Leah, I'm gonna put it back to you because <laughs> you, you're, you can speak eloquently about the, the, the station situation. Yeah. yeah, you know, how many of you guys have been to the Brattleboro Station? <laughs> Welcome to Vermont. That's what we want in Vermont. I mean, it smells bad. The water drains into the station. It's not handicapped accessible. There's in the bathroom. You know, it's just not what you want when it, you want it. You That is the station where people coming from uh, tourists come in and get off the train, and it's time to turn that around. Uh, we've been down there two or three times. We know that there's momentum. We know that there's funding sources that are looking at that. We couldn't even find out who had the lease on the station. Does anybody know that? I mean, if we couldn't even find out who leased the station. Did we ever figure that out? 
We never did. Yeah. You know, leases underneath the platform, the, the town owns the station, it's leased to the, the town owns the building, it's leased to the museum, but um, Amtrak is looking at ADA improvements, so we're, I think we're getting on a good track. Yeah, and it needs to be, and, and, and if we can add pressure to that, call us. Okay. You know, because that shouldn't be right. welcome yeah, to Vermont. Yeah, well, they have to do the ADA improvements. Yes. And then the town has to do the ADA improvements to the station, so it's it's in process. Right, and we're trying to get the I'm cars, honestly. we're trying to get the cars not to park down there too and to have a, a sign because right. that's not safe having vehicles turning around issues. while the train is coming in. Yeah. You know, safety is so important to all of us. As a matter of fact, Christine has just gone through the Operation Lifesaver uh, training program and is now our first registered uh, teacher for that. So Operation Lifesaver is also really important to us. Uh, other stations like, you know, Middlebury, we'd like to be able to help you with that. You know, Essex, we know that what you're trying to do in Essex is... We have a USS bathroom and it's, uh, can we have people uh, see CCTAs on the railroad avenue side and that street's owned by the, by the railroad. Yeah. And uh, they want to come to that. Yeah. It's time to clean this mess up. No. No. Fred. Fred's the last one. Fred Bailey. Hello, Fred Bailey. I'm from over in Enfield, New Hampshire. I'm real interested in Vermont Railroad for many, many reasons. But anyways, I want to comment on the latest on Amtrak's funding. I just barely, within the last week, received the May issue of Trains Magazine, and there's a feature article in there that says the federal government has approved funding for the national system of Amtrak, but more importantly for Vermont, over $50 million has been approved because Mr. Anderson, the president of Amtrak, threatened to shut down the Vermonter and the Down Easter because we do not and will not have PTC up here, the most modern safety features in the railroad industry. But anyways, the federal government approved at least $50 million to protect the Vermonter and the Down Easter in case Amtrak insists on having PTC or a similar system in the lines that now are the, the least bought in the country as far as dispatching goes. What does the PTC mean? Positive. Train control. Uh, Positive train control. And Senator Leahy put the $50 million in to save that into the Amtrak budget. So next time you see him, you thank him dearly for all that he does for us. Yeah. And all the time they have money to take care of a very serious rock situation in Vermont, right. which derailed the uh, Vermont or several years ago, yeah. they've taken care of the very serious tree situation along the New England Central. So progress is being made safety-wise. And I'm a former railroad safety officer. I'm very concerned about safety in the state of Vermont. I could go on for half an hour, but I won't. Thank you all for being here today. You know, rather than answer your question ma'am about not specifically about trains in stations and improvement but you have to look at the short history in which we have been an advocacy group the short history in which trains have become important again in our transportation scenario you know I mean, again as little as 50 years ago we were still ripping all this stuff up 20 years ago we were still the Lamoille Valley Railroad tore it up you know, and so, but that whole tide has changed. It's, it's, it's like turning a, a, you know, a, a ship. It takes forever to get people's mindset to move around, to get chairmen in place that understand the need for alternative transportation across a wide swath of, of, of transportation opportunities for all Vermonters in our region. So while it doesn't look like we're making much progress, I can tell you from being an advocate myself for the past 20 years that we are and we're fighting a, a huge, you know, engineering group that says engineering meaning civil engineering that says 
no, we need more roads, we need more bridges for more roads, but that's slowly changing. And our group, as Lee's pointed out, uh, and Deb's pointed out, is, is that we are addressing these issues. And for this gentleman from Middlebury right here, um, that endowment in Middlebury College is large enough to build the, the, Taj, the Taj Mahal of rail stations. And, and I'm sure as soon as we load up a, a, a number of trains going southbound in New York or coming back to Middlebury with Middlebury students, that platform will grow its, its usefulness very rapidly. So there, there's, but again, it's a start. It's, it's a re regeneration that, that we're taking place. So, so be patient. Now, how can you help? Christine informs me that for $20, you can go online or see here on the way out, and you can be a member of the Ront Rail Action Network. 20 bucks. That's it. If you like what you hear today, also pick up one of our new bumper stickers. I'd rather be on the train. And when the weather improves, clean off your bumper and slap it on. <laughs> Thanks for all being here. Have a safe drive home. Thank you.